What is grace? Grace, there are two words I want you to write down, if you can. Grace, God gave me, the Lord gave me this definition of grace, and it changed my life. Two words. Grace is omnipotent benevolence. Omnipotent benevolence. I will give you another two words that are simpler. Almighty kindness. The grace of God is omnipotent benevolence or to make it simpler, almighty kindness. Grace is the kindness of the almighty working on behalf of a person. Grace is when somebody who has all power decided to be kind to a person. You see, if somebody is kind to you, but his power is limited, then what you can benefit from his kindness is also limited. Imagine that I really like you and I want to help you, but all the money I have in my account is 100,000 naira. Can you get more than 100,000? No. The maximum my kindness will be able to get for you will be 100,000. But imagine that I had a billion dollars in my account and I really, really liked you and I wanted to help you. Do you notice that because of how much I have, you can benefit more from my kindness? Does that make sense now? Okay. So now imagine that somebody who owns heaven and earth and has all power, unlimited power, he decided to be kind to you. That is grace. You see, because if the person had all power, but he is not kind to you, he, did, he didn't find favor in his sight. You see, you will not be able to benefit from his power. Is that not so? But now, oh, 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 ha! He has all power. And then something is connecting his power to you. A bridge of kindness is linking his power to your weakness. You see, when you limit grace to just, you see, the forgiveness of sin is a manifestation of grace. It's one of the kindnesses eh, that you can benefit from because of the power of the one that chose you. That chose to have mercy on you. Strength when you are going through a difficult situation. Inner strength such that you will not collapse. You will not quit. You will not give up. You will not, you know, uh, be crushed or overwhelmed by your situation. That inner strength is a manifestation of grace. In fact, the truth actually, people of God, is that <laughs> grace is the only platform that the creator can relate with creatures. Everything created must survive on grace, including the angels in heaven. Did you hear what I just said? Even the angels in heaven survive on grace. There is a verse of scripture, he said, grace is not just for sinners. Hi. God was gracious before sin arrived. You see, grace is a divine attribute. And as a divine attribute, you cannot use human behavior to define a divine attribute. Because the divine attribute existed before human beings arrived. There is a scripture that says, what do you have that you did not receive? Have you read that scripture before? Do you know that if you ask Angel Michael that question, his answer will be the same as our answer? He said, my friend, now what do you have that you did not receive? I said, nothing. I received it. Angel Michael, what do you have that you did not receive? Michael will have to say, nothing. I received everything. So now, if you received it, then it's not of works. It is of grace. So even the creatures in... Hey, Paul, do you know Satan's problem? Listen now. Satan's problem 
was that he did he was not satisfied with grace so he fell into disgrace you see grace made satan the covering cherub grace gave him the beauty of that archangel called lucifer grace position he didn't do any of these things by himself it was the grace of god that did that but he was not satisfied with grace so you know what he said he said i will ascend i will you know go to the sites of the north i'm going to sit over the congregation like the most high he said i will be like the most high they say you will be like the most high ah, ah, but we already raised you high and you are not satisfied with where we placed you you are looking for something else get out of here that's how satan fell into disgrace do you know that what happened to adam and eve was that they were not satisfied with grace so they fell into disgrace and, as and together with all human beings grace made adam and eve in the image of god and placed them in a beautiful garden but they were not satisfied with grace satan the master of disgrace came down to them and said don't be satisfied with what you are now god knows that if you do this you will get this you will become like this your eyes will be opened their eyes were already opened satan said you will be like god they were already like god they were made in the image of god so they were looking for something more than what grace has given to them that's how the human race entered into disgrace any time a candidate of grace is not satisfied with grace you are in danger of disgrace anytime somebody is receiving grace you're not satisfied you want something more that's how people enter into disgrace let's get back to the definition because i, I want to touch this this is barely an introduction before we get to where we are going but this is important my grace is sufficient for you why is it sufficient because it is the kindness of the almighty <laughs> the kindness of the almighty everybody everybody please listen to me here imagine going through life knowing that the kindness of the almighty will always be guaranteed to you can you imagine you are walking down the road knowing that the almighty one has decided to be kind to you do you know that if you understand that you will never be stranded in life Prophet, why the reason is because no matter what you face something will come out of his power to address your situation you can't be stranded you see when i understood this matter it took away fear from me there is nothing i can meet in life that his power cannot handle and because he is kind to me i know he will not leave me in any situation without intervening there for me grace is almighty kindness i want you <laughs> i want you to believe that the almighty the owner of heaven and earth has made an irrevocable decision to be kind to you <laughs> hmm. out of that kindness will come the forgiveness of your sin out of that kindness will come the supply of every need out of that kindness will come answers to your prayer out of that kindness will come blessings upon your generations out of that kindness will come anything and everything you can need the wisdom you need for your responsibilities the protection you need the safety the provision the abundance and everything you need to fulfill his will upon the earth will come out of the omnipotence of the one that has decided to be kind to you give god a clap of faith you understand what i'm talking about 
Ah, come on, give God praise in this place. <laughs> and that almighty kindness will do things that will boggle your mind. It will give you what you don't qualify for. It will intervene where you can't help yourself. Because, you see, what grace does through faith. So you hear the Bible say, for by grace are you saved through faith. What grace does is to provide a bridge to omnipotence. Imagine that here you are, you are very impotent, but you are connected to the omnipotent. You are helpless, but you are connected to the unfailing helper. Here you are, you are limited, but you have a pipe. <laughs> you have a pipe that connects you to the unlimited source. That's the life of grace. So anything can flow through the pipe in your direction. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. I said, blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, the grace of God is God's power working on somebody's behalf to whom God has decided to be gracious. And that will make him to choose anybody he likes. He can choose Abraham from worshipping idols and bring him, you understand, to become the father of faith. Or he can choose Rahab. Rahab, a prostitute in a cursed city and bring her to be the source of salvation to her family. You know, Rahab's story is, is something that really touches me. So everybody, Rahab is a prostitute. Everybody knows that. And I can imagine the family has mocked and dismissed Rahab and closed Rahab's case. She's the black sheep of the family. What can never come out of Rahab? But picture the day that Rahab said, all of you must come to my house today. They said, come and do what in your house. Rahab said, I don't know, but you must come to my house. He said, don't you have customers? Have you sacked all your customers? Rahab said, don't insult me. Come on, you must come to my house today. So, and she gathered all of her family members into her house on the wall with the scarlet rope. You remember that scarlet rope now? I don't have time to get into this. So I want you to picture as the walls of Jericho are collapsing on every side. It was only the little house on the wall. Rahab's house on the wall. That's the only portion that remained. And her family members are shaking and they are terrified. Rahab said, don't worry, don't worry, just wait. Don't, don't worry. No, all of them are trembling. Rahab said, wait, wait, wait. And then Joshua told those two spies. I'm sure you remember those two spies. He said, go in there. Go and bring out Rahab and her people. And then they came. And then as they were going out, Rahab said, follow me. Her father, her mother, her brothers, her sisters, they are following the former prostitute out of the city of Jericho. Their salvation is dependent now on the prostitute. Is the one that looked hopeless and, and lost. She is the person now that God is using to take them away from the place of destruction. This is Rahab. And they are following. They are shaking like that and they are following Rahab. As they are following her, they are shaking. They are shaking. And they are walking down the place. Walking down the place. And they are wondering, is this for real? And Rahab said, just come. Just come. And they kept them outside for seven days. After that, they brought them into the camp. And Grace had not finished with Rehab. They continued to travel along the way now to the promised land. So instead of being destroyed, Rehab is traveling in the direction of destiny. I said Rehab is heading towards her destiny. Grace was not done yet. The kindness of the Almighty One. Grace kept on following Rehab, traveling with Rehab. Until one day, one guy said, Rara, how are you, Rara? And <laughs> Rehab said, um, what did you say? He said, well, Rara. Now, let me tell you what I think. This is Thor says, but Ferdinand. <laughs> there are some times when I want to say something that you will not read in the Bible. I will say, 
Thus says Brother Ferdinand. So you can dis you can disagree with me if you don't if you don't agree. I believe it was one of those two spies. I actually believe it was one of those two spies. Mr. Salmon. Mr. Salmon said, Rara. I said, excuse me, what do you want? He said, I love you. You love who? You can't find anybody among all of these, your Israelite people. It is me. And you, by the way, you know my history. You know my story. You say you want to marry me. You, you say you want to marry me. I catalog it here. Some of you, you are fixed on your history. God does not consult your history to determine your destiny. He does not consult your history to determine your future. The name of it is called Grace, Grace, Grace. And Mr. Samuel said, I mean business. He said, you want what? I want to marry you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how, uh, that's how, you know, on that day, Rahab is coming down the aisle and she's dancing. I'm going to meet my Lord. Where he goeth, I will go. Where he liveth, I will live. His people shall be mine. I'm going to meet my Lord. Where he goeth, I will go. Oh, my Lord, on my way, you see me through. I'm going to be all of those Israelite women who are not yet married. They are looking at this ex prostitute from Jericho and they are saying, We will dash this monkey, this banana. They say, Close. God was not done yet. Rara got married, settled into our family home, and you will think, you will think, ladies and gentlemen, that her life of sin will have destroyed her womb. Infections. I am a doctor by training. I don't do active medical practice now. But you see women that have had infections, and the infection has twisted their tubes and corrupted everything inside. Imagine Rehab sleeping with. Rehab was an international prostitute. She was not just serving the city of Jericho. Even the travelers who are passing by are branching into Rehab's house. But glory to God. Grace opened the womb. Rehab conceived. And Rehab brought forth a son named Boaz. What's the name of this thing, everybody in this place? Grace, grace, it's called grace. And you know the rest of the story. Boaz married another woman of grace called Ruth. And Ruth, you know, you gave birth to a son called Obed. And Obed gave birth to a son called Jesse. And Jesse became the father of David the king. And further down the line, the Messiah himself came out from the same line from where Rahab, the former prostitute of Jericho, along the road that she has traveled. In the name of Jesus, I delete your past from your head. I delete your past from your head. Grace has arrived. I said grace has arrived for you in the name of Jesus. Jesus went to the cross so that grace can be guaranteed to us. I said guaranteed. And when you come on the ticket of what Christ has done, you will find grace without question. Glory to the name of Jesus Christ.